Hey guys, my name is Tim and I'm the Master Mechanic at Zeit and BMW Mobile Services and today in this video we have 2008 BMW 328i and we're gonna be replacing the starter. First of all, let me show you what happens when the starter fails. When starter fails, the things you're gonna experience is you're gonna put your key in, step on the brake and push the button but nothing happens everything lights up everything works but there is no sound whatsoever of course uh, it might be the battery but usually when the battery is drained and you push the start button everything starts flickering so that's not it uh, then the next thing uh, very important one the codes we go to car access systems and read the codes and that the code you will see starter operation 95% of the times that's uh, the starter needs to be replaced and starter fails sometimes suddenly so you just uh, it was starting just fine and then the next day you want to start the car and nothing happens or starter can uh, be dying gradually and it turning slower and slower and slower like uh, but you can never predict when it's gonna fail and if you try to erase this code, uh, it's not going to go away and it's not going to be able to start the car. Well, let's get to it. First thing we're going to do is remove all the plastic, so it's a uh, cabin filter, housing, engine power, air filter box. But for that, you can click the video, like uh, I'll put it in the description below. We have a special one to remove just all the plastic. Next thing we're gonna do is uh, remove this bar and to do that first it's uh, we're gonna use 14 millimeter socket 12 point to loosen this bolt uh, you don't have to remove it completely and then we're gonna use uh, 11 millimeter on this one you can use E sockets but those work just fine those are large bolts so nothing happens you can't really strip them even if they're super tight and then you just slide this bar out it has a open end so it goes back there and you don't have to remove that bolt at all after that um, I'm gonna disconnect this line right here so the way to do it is to push it this white tab right here and just slide it out pushing the white tab and taking it out also this is obviously broken but the other end is right here uh, this is a standard BMW push and pull connector I'm just gonna push and pull this line is out uh, next thing power steering reservoir it's a uh, two 10 millimeter nuts right here uh, we're gonna take them out and now I'm just gonna put it aside we don't need to do anything with it so I'm just gonna put it there and now we're ready it's uh, simple to remove this uh, intake boot there there's a vacuum hose just slide it out disconnect this guy right here uh, now we can take those large wiring harnesses out of its places right there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, so they sit right there and this sensor, it goes behind this metal thing. So you just pull it down and it's out of the way. And this one just pull it straight up and it's free now same goes for this uh, power wire so just take it out of this bracket pull it down everything should be free 
and the vacuum line right here taking it all out uh, the next thing uh, we're gonna remove this intake boot and as you can see it faces uh, down so you just gonna reach it with a screwdriver or you can use six millimeter socket to make it easier but just make it completely loose it's gonna be a little tough most likely but then just remove it and this allow us to remove the throttle body it's uh, four 10 millimeter bolts right there on each corner and first of all we're gonna disconnect the uh, connection to the throttle body it's a simple push and pull so you push right here and just slide it out just like that disconnect this connection from the diesel valve it's just uh, simply pull it out or you can uh, just bend this tab a little bit with a pick tool and now we're ready to take those bolts out Throw everybody out. Next, there is uh, this hose right there. What are we gonna do? Because of its location, there's uh, really it's standard BMW push and pull hose, uh, but because of this location, we can't squeeze it from the other side. But if you have a this uh, special pliers and everything you can but you don't need it actually so what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna put the screwdriver right here on the bottom just push it a little bit just like that and now I'm holding this hose pulling it back with not a lot of force but just enough for it not to snap back and now we just uh, do the same with the with the top one this one is a really tough one and there you go and now it's free Let's just uh, put it out of the way. The next thing we have in here is uh, two Torx 30 bolts that are holding this whole thing in place to the intake manifold, which we need to remove. Those two bolts are on each side, right there. And uh, it's really hard to show. Just know they're there, you really will see them. So one is loose. And the other one is right there. Once again, I'm gonna just uh, point my socket in its direction. It's really hard to film this bolt, but it's right there.
once we did that, this whole thing is free and it's not on the way of removing the intake manifold. Now we're gonna remove the crankcase ventilation valve hose. And what we're gonna do is, I have this pick tool right here and uh, this is one tab and 180 degrees is the bottom one. So I'm just gonna push the bottom one first. So the hose moves like that. And then I'm just gonna hold it here in place creating a little bit of a tension and push the top one and it's out that's it uh, next thing uh, gonna remove this Torx 25 bolt right there it will free the fuel line Now the fuel line is free, we can move it out of the way. Now basically almost everything is ready to remove the bolts for the intake manifold. Bolts and nuts. Now what are we going to do is disconnect all those. Uh, this uh, oil pressure sensor, the oxygen sensors, connectors, well, standard, push, pull. And the second one. So this now is disconnected and now we can finally remove those uh, seven in total. It's a four bolts, 11 millimeters. And one, two, well, you can uh, clearly see all of them. The hardest one in the back, but considerably. Okay, now we're ready to remove the intake manifold completely. Might be a little stuck, that's normal, but except those seven bolts, nothing holds it in place. Now we have in the back of the intake manifold those wires. You don't really need to do anything, you just pull them out. Just like that. Just don't forget to plug them back in. Right there. And now Let's take the intake manifold out of here. Carefully routing all the wires through. And be careful definitely with the crankcase vent hose right there. Also, one more tip, you put it somewhere, it might be leaking oil. So be aware of that. And now, here it is. That's the starter right there. So, well, definitely disconnect this one. What makes this job a little bit hard, I would say, it's uh, one of the starter bolts. The starter has only, uh, it sits on two bolts, is right there, which is one, on, uh, this one is uh, real easy to remove. The other one, although facing different direction, uh, it's a, uh, on the transmission side 
this one is hard to remove the socket will not fit in there and some people do it from the bottom but i'll show you how to do it right here what we're going to be using is a 11 millimeter open wrench with the 12 points in the end just a regular one you can get it anywhere it fits perfect on those bolts and this is how it's done you put it right there just make sure when you turn it it doesn't twist and then there you go this is the way to remove this uh, complicated bolt nothing really special after you loosen it it might be easy to turn with your hands which is what I'm doing right now uh, it might be a little bit stubborn and you'll have to spend take your time with the 11 millimeter range but overall this is pretty much it way easier than lifting up the car and using a million extensions trying to reach this bolt and all that so there you go this is the long one uh, one of the starter bolts one more thing when you replace the starter you don't need to replace those bolts yes they are aluminum but nothing happens to those bolts the bottom bolt you can use this 11 millimeter also but I'm gonna be uh, using the extension next thing we're gonna do is remove this 13 millimeter nut right there be careful this is the positive connection to the starter and if your battery is not disconnected well first of all disconnect it now's the time and but second if it's not just make sure nothing touches this connection at all and now we're gonna remove this second starter bolt loosen it and take it out the bottom one is short bolt so you can't mix them up, that's for sure, 100%. And now we're ready to remove the starter. Sometimes they get stuck, that happens. I'm gonna try, yeah, this one is not moving at all. So what are we gonna do? I'll put the screwdriver right here. And just try it out, nice and simple. So now, let me put the light right here. I'm just gonna pull this and get the starter out of the way. That's the troublemaker right here. Today we're gonna be using the Duralast Gold starter. While uh, it has some benefits using a Duralast products from AutoZone or you can use uh, something else from uh, O'Reilly's. I don't remember the branding they have. Uh, the reason why they provide the lifetime warranty for the starter so if it fails again ever you can bring it back and they will give you a new one absolutely for free uh, interesting thing the Duralast Gold is uh, it's a new starter it's not remanufactured and for some reason it's cheaper than the remanufactured one so if you can get one sure get the new one but for those uh, who want the original BMW product I definitely recommend Bosch even though uh, they will provide you with one year warranty but that's definitely gonna last longer than those starters and well the beauty about it like we can get the starter basically everywhere and uh, well right now is Sunday and the car doesn't start so we need this now not tomorrow uh, let me see also one thing to know definitely Here's the new starter. You need to put the old one back in the box and bring it back to the AutoZone. They'll give you $40 for charge. Or you can remove the starter first, and go to AutoZone and just buy it right away. They'll give you a $40 discount. 
also uh, in AutoZone they can test the starters if you're not sure but on E90 body type like those 328 128 and uh, all of the BMWs that have N51 and 52 engine 95% of the time when you push the start button nothing happens that's the starter but don't take my word on it diagnose all the time now we're ready to install the starter back in the new one I just wrote it just like that it fits perfect First thing I'm gonna do is put this uh, positive back in place and put the nut on it. The reason why, so it's not hanging around and not hitting anything. After that, I'm gonna be installing first, I'll say the, the long bolt. This is how I do it. Put it back in the hole. And now, You can take the starter a little bit out of its place, makes it way easier to put this bolt back in. And now just continue tightening it hand tight. And now it's hard to turn by hands time to get the other one, the small one. Goes right there. Place. Now when you can't turn it by hand anymore, just take your time with 11 millimeter and just do it like that. actually still turning good and now it's done you don't need to make them extremely tight just uh, whatever you can do with this 11 millimeter it's a small range so you can't break the bolt by Turning this wrench, unless well, it's super strong and you can hurt yourself doing so. So now both bolts are installed on the starter, and we can finally tighten uh, this 11, I mean uh, 13 millimeter nut for the positive connection. And don't forget to plug this in right away. So this is it, the starter installed. Now we're going to install back the intake manifold, but before that I just want to wipe clean those intake ports a little bit. Now we're going to install back the intake manifold and if you can't get the intake manifold gasket, it's fine, you can replace them, but in my experience, not really necessary. Nothing happens to it. Well, I mean, every car is different, but at the same time we replaced hundreds of starters and barely ever replaced the intake manifold gasket. It's just on this engine, it doesn't play that much of a role. So it's always fine. And let's go get this manifold back in. So the way we're gonna do it, we definitely wanna route it through those wires first. And uh, that's how it goes. Now, when we got the manifold like that, don't forget about those connectors right there. One, the small one, goes right here. And the other one to the DISA, right there. Other thing, in uh, the first gap of the intake manifold, you just wanna push the oxygen sensor wires right here. and. It's all done right there. 
I'll just gradually move the intake manifold right there. And this is it. It's nice. It's sitting nicely on those pins right there. And we're just ready to install the bolts back in. Now the intake manifold is bolted on. Uh, now we're ready to route the wiring. So we're gonna use the long one first. Put it here under this wire, right there. And now push it here, there. It's really hard to mix those out, one is short, one is long, as long as you don't touch it, and but you don't really need to in that case. So yep, this is all done. This is back in place. Uh, now what are we going to do is remember we took this Torx 25, we're going to put it back and now I can connect this one right here, oh actually the wire is here not properly routed they should be on top right there not under now we just snap it back here it click it's done and there is torx 25 right there here it is now what are we gonna do is uh i'm just gonna put this hose back in place right there where it's supposed to be just push it all the way till it clicks and now we can put those Torx 30 bolts on this unit put it back in place if you lost them if you don't have them it's no big deal nothing happens like uh, I've seen plenty of cars without those bolts it doesn't make a difference uh, now we installed this whole electrical hub back in place, it's bolted on, now we're ready to put the throttle body back in and uh, before you do that just uh, definitely clean it up, this is your main and only uh, entry point for the air for the car, sometimes the build up is so huge that uh, it blocks this area right here and the car won't start, I mean it's gonna crank but it doesn't get enough air. So remember that. It rarely happens here in California, but sometimes. Put one in. From this point forward is everything is quite simple. So just retrace your steps and install it, put it all back together. And now when everything's uh, back in place, could put the key in and start it up. That's the sound you're supposed to hear after this job done. Now what are we gonna do is only after you start the car you can clear the code for the starter operation from car access system. This is it guys, I hope this video was definitely helpful to you. Uh, this is how you do the starter replacement and just uh, a reminder after you do everything and if you have a scanner it's best to check the DME codes because if you forgot to plug something in the code will appear right away. So thank you guys for watching, see you next time.